Yo, 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 ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Unprofessional Breakdown. And this time, I got the president, my homie for many, many years, one of my closest friends, Mitchell Shamali. What's going on from the other side of the world? How you doing, brother? <laughs> What's up, man? I'm chilling, bro. Just, uh, it's like uh, 1030 a.m. here. I think I've already had like 3,000 calories. I've been eating everything this morning, so I'm, I'm, I'm doing good. It's uh, it's ten thirty Friday, right? Yeah, it's ten thirty on Friday. I believe it's what ten thirty p.m. Thursday there. Yeah, over here. So I'm literally talking to somebody from the future. What? 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 Conspiracy chat. Little insight there. Mm -hmm. But hey, straight only to on it, man. Unprofessional. Only on only unprofessional. unprofessional. We just talk about crazy shit. Mighty Mouse versus uh, Mahias. It was uh very interesting. You got uh you got that Cuban coffee over there. Nah, bro. This is fucking Singaporean coffee called Kopi. It's um, you can't bring it's basically like a cortadito. Bro, I'll bring some back for you. I'll bring some package for you. It's like a, it's like a, a it's like a Cuban coffee, but it's a full yeah. cup. Crazy. <laughs> that shit looks strong. But yo, Mighty Mouse versus Mahias. A lot of folks out there don't really know the um the rules of 1FC. You've been over there multiple times, you know, to corner Troy, and uh, you're about to corner Troy again. So um, before I ask you about the rules and, and your opinion on it, um, what do you think of it, man? Two rounds, you know, everybody already saw it, you know, with the knee. Mighty Mouse was getting up, and he got knee. It was a great stoppage. Um, I was shocked to see it, being a big Mighty Mouse fan. Um, the way he dominated in the UFC comes over to one champion, and it's in tough fights, you know, and this is the toughest fight he's been in. And he got finished first time in his career. You you saw it, you know, what 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 do you think of his performance in that fight? You know, man, um I thought he looked a little gun shy. He was um he was throwing a lot a lot of hooks against a long rangey opponent. Um and he wasn't getting inside. And then whenever he did finally commit and get inside, he got caught with a short uppercut. Um, I think that's what really did the damage was that short uppercut. And then, you know, the knee was kind of the cherry on the top. Um, I think he could have just as easily hit him with a couple of elbows. He was in a good position to do that. Um, but it was the knee and that put him out. I mean, you look at, at, at Mighty Mouse's eyes and he was just, he was not there. The lights were gone. Yeah, that, that nice little uppercut just put him on his butt. And again, that knee just really, he went out. He went out and it was a, it was a justified. Now, what I saw was different. You know, being a fan of Mighty Mouse, he never was the one that was always pressuring the fighter. From what I remember, he never was the one that was pressuring, you know, um, coming forward. But in this fight, he was like the aggressor. Like he tried to take control of the cage. He was missing a lot, right? A lot of punches weren't landing. And um, like you said, he was kind of gun shy, throwing a lot of hooks, which I found was weird as well against, like you said, a longer, taller guy. I thought, you know, the overhands would be there. I thought he would shoot low real fast, and, like, he would shoot from far. Like, yep. I don't know. It seemed like he was off. Um, Mahias is tough, man. He's a tough, big, yeah. he's a big, he's a big uh, 135-er, you know, flyweight over there in, in, uh, in one, right? 135-ers, right? Yeah. They're natural, close to their natural weight or whatever. Yeah. Um, you know, yeah. and it, you know, the, the funny thing is, uh, I have a buddy, his name is Tyler Stout, he trains over at Pete White's MMA. He's a big MMA fan and he, he's looking to fight soon. So hopefully they find him a fight. But he's like, man, don't you think it's ironic? Don't you think it's ironic that he commentated on the knee that Al Jermaine Sterling took and um, he was all for it? Isn't it ironic that he lost via knee on the ground? Again, the rules are different for one champion. And I was like, ah, oh, that is a little ironic. But knowing him, I know he's going to take it on the chin. I mean, he took the, the knee to the chin. But he's going he's gonna to be a champ about it and, you know, move forward. And, you know, he's always a nice guy. But I found out that was a little, little ironic as well. Yeah, I mean, you know, it is what it is, man. Uh, live by the sword, die by the sword. Um, I don't think, I don't, yeah, like you said, I don't think it's going to phase him at all. You know, Demetrius is getting a little bit older. Um, he's yeah. not a spring chicken anymore, man. He's been in this game a long time and it's, uh, you know, it's, it's, it's no, it's no secret the older you get, um, things start changing in your body and your brain. And, 
you know, it becomes easier to get knocked out. Once you, I, I always say um, everyone gets a punch card in this game. And every time you get knocked mm-hmm. out, every time you get hit, every time you get rocked, you get a punch, a punch taken off your card. And, and no one knows how many punches they get. You know, some, some people get 20 punches, some get 40, some get 100. But once those punch cards are all punched out, that's it. Your chin's gone. Your chin's gone. And I'm not saying that's the case with, with Mighty Mouse. Um, only time will tell. But, you know, you look at guys like James Vick, you know, um, he started getting knocked out. Ever since, it's just been downhill. You look at Chuck Liddell. Yeah. Um, yeah. There's so many examples that you can think of. And it's unfortunate, but, you know, it's part of the game. This is this is a young man's game. And, um, you know, maybe, maybe it's just time. I mean, people don't know who Marias is, who he is, but, man, that guy's a killer. That guy's a savage, and um, I would love to see him and Henry Cejudo go at it. Yeah, they don't know who he is, but the world the world knows who he is right now. You know, he beat arguably one of the greatest of yeah. all times in the flyweight division, and he stopped him. You know, um, mm-hmm. that's a big yeah. feat right there. Regardless of the fact that DJ's getting old, like he just won yep. the tournament, and um, he won his fights in in one FC, uh, one champion. Sorry, and. You know, he, he beat a he beat a legend, a future Hall of Famer in in, in the game of MMA and he's, the world knows who he is now. So I'm excited to see him, you know, from here on out, like what, what he got you know, planned and Yeah, you know, yeah, it's ahead, funny. Man. Um I saw a few people make status up so I, I saw a few people make status updates and they were saying things like, Oh, you know, horrible debut for one championship in America and that's not what one championship wanted to happen. And in my head, I'm like, what do you mean? The most well-known go flyweight champion ever, Demetrius Johnson, just got knocked out, finished for the first time by the one championship champ. So yeah. now the whole world is like, what the what's going on over there? You know, Demetrius wins, they're like, yeah, you know, UFC has better fighters. You know, the average casual fan would say that. But now yeah. that one championships champ won and beat Demetrius, I think it set it off for one champ. I think that's a huge, I think that was great for them because now the whole world was watching. It was on TNT, you know, millions of viewers. And now they're all wondering like, hey, what, what, who else do they have? Yeah. And you know what? I was talking to L earlier about one championship and Eddie Alvarez, a top dog, right? In, in the UFC, got knocked out. In his first in his debut for one championship, Sage Northcutt, right, supposed to be a superstar, got knocked out in his debut. His face literally broken in his debut with one championship. Yeah. So, I think one through the years has solidified themselves as obviously the the go to promotion, and they're huge in Asia, but they're right behind the UFC because yeah. realistically, you know, Bellator is great. All these other um. Uh, World Series of uh, MMA is great. Um, all that stuff is great, but I think one championship, the the caliber of fighters, a lot of folks don't know who they are, but man, they're they're awesome. Look at the uh, the middleweight. Is it a middleweight champ that trains down at Sanford MMA? That guy is an absolute killer. He was a champ yep, champ. Um, yep. Um. You know. I and, mean, uh, here's the thing, too, man. Is like, of course, in America. All we're gonna see is what we see every day. So we think yeah. UFC is number one in the world, the top top of the food chain. But if we're being realistic about it, one championship is at the top of the food chain. I mean, look at the look at the viewership, look at this, look at the stage they set for their athletes, um, look at the production value. Um, I mean, when you see those walkouts and you see, you know, 40 foot high LED screens, you see this giant walkway, it's like they've taken the production value of the WWE. And yep. the, 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 the real compet- competition and merged it. And it's not, you know, I mean, I know they're competitors, but at the end of the day, they're a martial arts company. They're not a mixed martial arts company. They're, they're showcasing kickboxing, Muay Thai, um, yep. you know, MMA. Muay Thai with it. the so MMA it's, it's gloves. A little different. I love it, man. I love it. Now, let me ask you a question. Is, is it possible for Combat Night to do Muay Thai with MMA gloves as an amateur? Is that is that is that something that can happen? Oh yeah, I don't know. There may it. there may be some folks that are interested in that, you know. Yeah. So I just thought, you know, it just came up right now. I I would love to see that. Now we've already we've already offered it to some athletes. Um, we just haven't had anyone say yes. Uh, we actually have one guy right now, Juan Lopez. 
out of American Combat Club saying anyone can get it at one anyone can get it at 135 put on the four ounce gloves let's go in there and kickbox and give the fans what they want so the state of Florida has already told me they approved it um we're allowed to do it with four ounce gloves so yeah. it's just are not you know amateur seven ounce gloves but seven um, yeah. it's just a matter of doing it you know so as soon as we find somebody somebody wants to step up feel free to message us and, and we'll put that fight together in orlando may 15th oh man you know what that's gonna be the actual snippet when i when i release this but now that's a perfect segue yeah. to a combat night tally i got the day off i'm actually gonna ride out on friday um friday after work just gonna drive directly to tally and be there for saturday yeah. There's one fight I know. I know Combat Night. Um, so anybody out there watching, yes, I am a part of the Combat Night family. No, I don't know the ins and outs of Combat Night. My job is to do this little show and commentate. I don't ask questions. I don't ask about the matchmaking. So don't ask me questions. Don't don't think that I know about the matchmaking. I don't know shit. I'm just as surprised as you, and I'm very surprised because this is <laughs> this fight the Joe Joe Penafield. Versus Rob Fuller, I know you're leaking the the yeah. um the card little by little, and that's great. But that fight right there, I don't know Joe personally, and I don't know Rob personally. You know both these cats. I've seen them both fight personally. Yep. I just want to know what the I don't know who spoke to Joe and who spoke to Rob. But when they say "Yo, you're gonna fight Joe," and they ask Joe he's gonna fight Rob, like they said "fuck yeah," like man, because I know they know about each other. They're gonna. That's gonna be. I'm calling it now. That that may be the fight of the night. Like I'm. I'm. I'm so hyped. Mm -hmm. to, I cannot wait to to watch that. As I mean, you you know more than I do. I'm just saying as as far as far yeah. as everything that's been released so far, which is a great card so far. But man, that one's the one that like yo, I cannot wait for that fight. I, I cannot wait for that fight. I, There's gonna be a lot of I damage. Think it'll be the most. It'll be the most entertaining fight tonight. Um, but to be the fight of the night, you usually got to go three rounds. Um, I think that fight's going to give us the knockout of the night. If you ask my opinion, um, I don't think it'll be the, uh, fight of the night. Um, you know, we got guys like Tony fighting Jordan Nash. Um, Jordan Nash right now is going at it on Facebook with everybody. He's calling out everyone and their mom. He's just fought the whole fusion against the fight team. That man said, I don't care. Come get it. Um, he's fighting oh, wow. T Murph and T Murph is, bro, T Murph is, is a savage. We love watching T Murph fight. I think that's going to be a good one. Man, there's, there's, a, there's a lot of good fights. Like Cleveland, uh, Cleveland McLean is fighting um, yeah. Pente out of – this kid's coming from Hawaii. He's flying all the way from Hawaii, and he said he's going to give Cleveland that business. And you know Cleveland loves to stand and bang. Hawaiians love to stand and bang. Um, I'm expecting – yeah, man, there's a bunch of really good fights on this card. Um, and then uh, Donovan is going to make his debut versus uh, Ramon Butts. That's, a, that's, gonna, Ramon that's Butts, a good fight there. Two former champions. Yep, two yep. former champions fighting each other. And uh, I know Donovan was going to make his debut at the last show, but um, I'm not sure what happened there. But he's going to make his debut in Tallahassee, which Messed is awesome. Up his foot. So I, oh, okay, that's okay. I, I wasn't aware of what happened there, and um, but yeah, I mean, I'm excited for that. And I know there's another combat night in Jacksonville, June 5th, right? That card, man. We can't. We I haven't even released no matchups yet. Um, but that car is gonna. That car is probably gonna trump what happened in Orlando, and related to seven hundred and fifty fans. Wow. I expect that one to sell out, quick. Like quick. Is that one gonna be MMA? Uh, is gonna be amateur and pro, or is that gonna be strictly amateur, or or mm -hmm. it's gonna be mix, or oh, it's gonna be mix amateur pro. Amateur. Amateur and pro, you know, everybody from Duval on that card. Justin Parsons, Austin Lane, Ramon Tavares, Stephen Coslo, Shelby Corinne is coming back. You know, she made her debut oh, nice. in Invicta, but she's ready to come back home to combat night and get back into Combatagon. Um, you know, Reggie Mack wants to fight. Uh, Devin Polk wants to fight. Brenton Turner wants to make his debut. Um, man, we got, like, that card is, that card's ridiculous. Whenever you, when we start putting out those, those matchups and letting everyone know who's fighting, it's going to sell out. Tickets on sale. We'll put them on sale about a month out. And I, I give it. Seems like we're having a little bit of uh, technical difficulties. Like I say, he's on the other side of the world, y'all. So be patient with me um, yeah. and my man Mitchell over there. And so, what? what how long you been? It's all good. 
It's unprofessional, man. Shit, I thought Rob Fuller fought a boxing match not too long ago. You see, I, I'm yeah. an idiot sometimes. Hey, how long you been in Singapore? I got here on April. I left April 1st. Get here. I think I got here on April 3rd. It was like 32 hours of flying. Um, and I've been out here on quarantine ever since. Like, they don't play out here. Anyone who's complaining about any place that you live in America, um, sh shut your mouth, bro. I got 10 quarantine, I got 10 tests. When they do the nose swab, you know, in America now, they just barely go in your nostril. Out here, yeah. they go, it, they're checking to see if it's in your brain, man. It's so deep. I was, the first day I got one, I was crying, literally, like tears, because they so damn deep in my nose. It se yeah, it seems like they got it put together over there. Um, and they're real strict over there. So you in your room, you can't say you can't say what's up to anybody. You can't talk to Troy or uh, interact with, with anybody, right? Um, we've been able to interact some. Uh so after we got a, after we got the initial COVID test in Singapore, we got the test back. Um, we were good, we were able to hang out. And then Every after like three or four days, for whatever reason, we had to get another test, <laughs> and then we couldn't hang out till we get our results. So right now we can't hang out. Um, it's been nice though. I've been able to get a lot of work done for combat night. Um, I'm yeah. enjoying a really cool view of like the city, and um, I mean this thing right here, the so back has been saving my life, man. Because I have my end up desk, so I've been sitting at my on this chair all day, and it just keeps my back good. It keeps my po I have good posture when I'm using it, but. Um, I've been getting a lot of stuff done, man. I'm not, I'm not, you know, it's not a bad quarantine by any means. You can, yeah, you can literally that, deliver and order anything in, in Singapore if you want. That's dope, man. I know you hit me up earlier today and I was like, damn, what time is it? You said 4.30 a.m. over there, you know, and it was, uh, it was, yeah. I forgot what time it was over. It was like 4.30 over here. Um, what time you wake up over there? Yeah, 12 hours ahead. We're 12 hours ahead of you guys. I know, but what time did you wake up to today? Oh, man, I've only been getting, like, two or three hours of sleep since, like, since probably, like, the day before we left, because I've just been running around. So, like, I went to Vegas with Hannah, um, you know, traveling, all that stuff, um, and then I got back, and then I, I drove to Miami, I drove to Tallahassee, we drove back to Miami, flew out, and on a plane, don't get much sleep, jet lag, you know, um, and it's been crazy, man. So, like, I've been getting two or three hours of sleep every night for, like, the past probably two weeks. Yeah. I mean, you're a hardworking man, bro, and uh, you know everybody here in Florida, too, and I guess over there in Singapore, you got some connects over there. So, um, that's that's dope, man. I'm, I'm excited for what's coming. Um, well, on behalf of all the fighters, I want to say thank you, Mitchell. Thank you, Richard Cox. Um, and also in, in the memory of uh, Josh Man. And as I, I'm, ta I'm talking about, I'm talking for all the fighters. We want to say thank you for putting MMA on, on a different level here in Florida, man. Like, I always talk about it. Like, when I first started this shit, there was maybe one, one show around. And it wasn't guaranteed, right? And it was like amateur kickboxing, maybe amateur... MMA, you know, Donnie Hare used to put on a bunch of uh, IK, IKS, yeah. whatever, IKF and all that. But it was like, it wasn't really consistent. You know, it, it could have been like maybe three times a year. Then you came on, you moved to Central Florida, and then you changed the game. And then now, even with in the midst of COVID, we have, you know, a lot of MMA shows and a lot of guys that are um, looking to fight. You find them fights, uh, Richard um, matches them up and, and all that stuff. So on behalf of all the fighters in Florida, Georgia, you know, uh, around us that you bring over to, to fight for Combat Night, we want to say thank you, man. Thank you to Combat Night, you, Richard, and everybody involved with Combat Night. You know, man, it's not really, uh, I mean, like, I might, be the, I might be the guy in the position that's kind of moving the pieces and shit, but, like, I'm keeping it real. Like, I, I do bust my ass and I do work hard and I, and I put everything I got into this, but I demand it from everybody that's going to be in my circle. If you're, if you're in my circle, if you're, if you're close to me, I can touch you. Then I demand greatness. You know what I mean? My friends, that's my, that's my family. Even you know, that's everybody that's close to me. I demand greatness. Um, and it's, it's not like, it's not, it's not a knock on anybody. You know what I mean? But like, 
they yeah. all step up. The people that stay in my circle, the people that are close to me, they step up, whether it's Ramsey White, Richard Cox, you know, whoever it is. Um, so it's really, it's a team effort, man. It's the fighters too, you know? Um, we don't, we have fighters all the time who hit us up asking for easy fights, asking for, you know, I just need to, I, I need to win. I want this, I want that. And it's like, man, you're talking to the wrong promoter. Go, go holler at somebody else because that's not us. Like we, we want greatness. We want the guys that, you know, um, want this and going to put in the hard work. So it's, it's a collective effort, man. You know, if, if these fighters didn't go out there and put it on the line and um, Richard didn't have all these amazing matchups, if Ramsey didn't always level up on production, you know, I mean, you've seen it, you've been there since mm -hmm. the beginning. Yep. So yep. whenever we had like cell phones, you know, recording fights and cell phone rigs and stuff. And, you know, so it's a team effort, man. Like I would just, you know, if anything, like I'm, I'm like the conductor, man, I just, I just, I have these really high expectations and I don't tell them how to get it done. I don't say, Hey Ramsey, you know, I need you to do that. Da, 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 da. I just say, Hey, I want this. This is the level I want. You know, I want this level. And then he, he meets it. And I'm like, Hey, I want this level next thing. It keeps going up and up and up and everybody just keeps stepping up to the occasion, you know? So it's, it's a team effort, man. It's, it's everybody involved. Yeah, man. And that's why I, I think that, it, that's why it's so successful. You know, you, you're never satisfied you're always looking for the next. Like we had a hell of a show and and um at the last event, and then you're already talking about the next fucking show. I'm like, God damn, bro! Like <laughs> you're like, yeah, yeah, you know, we had a great night, yeah, thank you, but hey, the next show is gonna be even better. So you started promoting that like that night. You started promoting for the next card, and you know that it, it that's what it takes to be successful. And look what Combat Night has accomplished, man! Multiple fighters in the UFC, not only the UFC, won championship and Victor, and you know. A lot of top tier promote Bellator, a lot of top tier promotions out there, you know, are are coming from from combat night, you know. So that's dope, man. And I'm 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 so happy to be a part of it. And a lot of people like to hate it. And um, you know, people are always gonna hate everything that somebody successful is always gonna do. But you know what we say, fuck them, right? And we just keep doing our thing. But yo, I don't wanna yeah. keep you, I don't wanna keep you from your morning. It's about to be 11 over here. I got to, um, you know, drink some water, yeah. brush my teeth, and go to bed, get, man. I already to took bed. a shower. But, yo, I yeah. finally got Mitchell on the show. Thank you for coming on the show. I got to get you and Donaldson on the show. Yo. And y'all already know. I'm not even going to release the title yet, but I'm gonna, I got to get both of you on the show. For sure. Listen, we'll, we're going to get on the show together, man, but... Before you go, I got to say something about critics and haters. Number one, if you're not doing something big, then you're probably not going to have haters. If you're living a simple life, you're not going to have haters. You can do that. You can live a simple life, live an easy life, and not have to worry about haters. I don't, give a, I don't care about the haters. I don't care about the critics. I care about the people that are connected with us, the ones that we're trying to help, the ones we're trying to get to the top. That's what I care about. That's who I want to touch. The and I want to see them do great things. If you're one of the haters, I don't even care, man. Water under the bridge. I'm over that shit. Like, I don't got time for haters. Um, and Man, at the end of the day, I mean, you're always going to have people criticizing you. And most of the time, they're sitting on their couch eating potato chips, not doing a damn thing with their life. So that is what it is, man. But yeah, it man, is, we'll, we'll definitely holler at you, man. It is what it is. Yo, enjoy your time over there. Can't wait to see you back home. And um, have a good night, Yo, brother. Have a good day. Last thing, we're bringing back the pack. I got mines. I'm just waiting for a retro to give me mines. I already, I already paid for mines. I'm wait, I can't wait to rock that. <laughs> Yeah. Come on, retro. <laughs> yeah, retro. Come on, man. And I got the, the Rash Guard too. The Galaxy one, which is dope as hell. But all right, man. Yo, take care. Can't wait to see you, man. And love you, bro. Peace. Hey, man. Peace out. Love you, homie.